Well, hello everyone, my name is Marlene, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be telling you all about the books that I read in September. So in the month of September, I read 12 books, uh, most of which were for the Bad Bitch Readathon, which was a month long readathon that I participated in. Um, I also read three books for the Buzzwordathon, which was a week long readathon from the 21st to the 27th of September. And I also read some other books that I wasn't really planning on reading, and I didn't read some books that I was planning on reading, so there's that. I ended up reading two uh, two star books and two three star books. I also ended up reading two three and a half star books. I ended up rating four books with a four star rating and two of the books that I read I found were four and a half stars. So the first book that I read was Winter by Marissa Meyer. So yeah, this is the last book in the Lunar Chronicles and in this book we follow the crew that we end up meeting in the other books um, and finishing up their quest of defeating the evil queen that is Lavana. So yeah, I don't want to say too much because it's the fourth book in the series, it's the final book in the series. I had already started this book at the end of August but I wasn't able to finish it in the month of August so that's why it's here. I was really enjoying it then. Um, I did however ended up giving it three and a half stars which is still good um, but um, it kind of dragged on too long for my taste. We switched perspectives a lot um, and because this book is called Winter I did want to read more in Winter's perspective than we got to read in in this book. That also made it a bit confusing as to who was splitting up with whom and where they were going and what they were doing and what the other people were doing at the same time and um, yeah that's why I did give it three and a half stars but I still really enjoyed the story and where each and every character ended up at the end. I loved the way it kind of finished up everything so yeah solid ending of a series. The next book that I read was Hollow with the Menson by Anusha Nzume and this is a non-fiction book. This is a book that is written in Dutch so um, I don't believe it's translated but um, yeah I read it in Dutch. So this is pretty much a an introduction into um, racism in the Netherlands for white people. As a Dutch person and knowing what is going on in the rest of the world, uh, especially in the US and the UK, um, I really wanted to take a closer look at racism in the Netherlands specifically. Of course, I already knew that the Netherlands has uh, is not free of racism. I mean, we have a very uh, prominent colonizers past and we have uh, influxes of immigrants coming into the country um, for work or um, fleeing their own countries. Um, and this has happened at multiple moments in time. It's gone, it's a thing throughout history. And um, despite our country um, calling itself multicultural, and it has been calling itself that for years and years, um, there's still racism because we're mostly white and we have a tradition where blackface is a very prominent and visible thing that happens during those times. I mean, yikes. So yeah, like I said, this book is not big. It's very much an introduction. Um, it very much displays the uh, personal experiences of the author, um, explaining all of the things that happened to her, the microaggressions, the white privilege that she has seen in our country and um, yeah basically the rude and ignorant comments she receives on basically a daily basis. Um, it also briefly mentioned the tradition of Zwarte Piet in November, December um, and the discussion that is still going on at the moment in this country of whether or not putting um, black or brown face paint on a white person, putting on gold earrings, a coily wig and red lipstick is racist or not. 
Um, the answer to that is yes, by the way. And it also touched on some things that I didn't know, like the special townships that we have in the Netherlands, which were basically colonies of the Netherlands, but turned into a special township. Um, but besides that, that were basically still colonizing it. Because the citizens of, for example, Bonaire still aren't on equal footing with the citizens in the Netherlands in Europe. Their government is the government of the Netherlands. But for example, their healthcare isn't nearly as good as the healthcare that we have here. And I felt like that was really interesting. And um, that's really some stuff that I want to look into myself because schools apparently don't find that um, important enough to teach me. So I'd have to do that myself. As for the rating, I ended up giving this book four stars um, just because I feel like it's a very helpful book for some people, um, but only if those people who decide to pick this up are open-minded enough to um, shut the hell up and um, finish this book from like start to finish and really think and are open to um, hearing about the struggles of a person of colour in the Netherlands. Um, this book doesn't really talk about numbers or statistics much, so if um, people need proof um, in order to believe a woman, which is basically the entire problem, isn't it? Um, they um, probably wouldn't really like the way they are spoken to in this book. But if you are willing to read more about racism in the Netherlands, and to gain some insight as to what it is to be a person of color or a black person in the Netherlands, then uh, yeah, this is a very, very useful book. And the next book that I read was A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. So in this second book of the Shades of Magic trilogy, we still follow Kel, Lila and Rai. Um, and this time we are going to participate in um, like this competition, a magic competition. Um, this book takes place about four months after the first book ended and Lila left um, Red London. But now Lila is back and there's this magical competition, this magical tournament involved and the ending it's just killed me. And I really want to read the third book in this series because I want to know what happens, okay? As far as rating goes, I ended up giving this book four stars. I felt like it missed a little bit of the pacing that I really liked uh, about the first book. Um, it took a little bit of time to get things going in this book. The first half of this book, almost, the first third of this book, we are very, very much catching up with um, what all of the characters have been doing for four months after they have left each other and basically establishing um, who was doing what and what they're going to do now. Um, and then, of course, the tournament starts. There wasn't really a lot of on-page tournament, but a lot of shenanigans besides um, everything that happens in that competition. But of course, those things are very fun and intriguing to read about as well. And of course, we find out more about the characters. As for the romance, um, I do feel like that we've established by now that V.E. Schwab's strongest point isn't writing romance um, because it kind of hits you out of nowhere. I feel like that like Cal and Delilah have a lot of mutual respect for each other, but um, yeah, love, it is not. But that ending though, that ending, like I said, killed me and I cannot wait to continue on with this series because I got to know. After that, I finished another sequel and that was Quintana of Charon by Melina Marchetta. This is the third book in the Lumetere Chronicles. So yeah, this time around, we also followed everybody, even though Quintana's name is on the front cover. Uh, we didn't really follow her specifically and in my opinion, not enough, um, but that's besides the point. Um, yeah, so we uh, followed everybody and we were kind of finishing up the entire series and the storyline and hopefully towards a, a happily ever after. I was kind of disappointed with this one actually. I, it was still good. I love the characters, I love the writing, I love the way it ended, um, but there were still some things that I didn't really feel. It is actually tied to the plot 
so I don't want to say too much, but I am going to because um, it kind of uh, goes hand in hand with the trigger warning that I would put on this book. I would say um, if something like a miscarriage or losing a child in that way um, or losing a born child, lo like losing children, um, if that in any way triggers you, I would not recommend this series in general because that was briefly touched upon in the second book as well. Um, but this third book really took that up a notch. If you're not triggered by it, feel free to skip this part and go to set time on the screen somewhere. Um, so you don't really get spoiled, I guess. But for the people who um, are triggered by this kind of stuff, this might be good. To know. So yeah, Charon, the country, um, is suffering from a curse. And this curse has made the entire country of Charon barren. So children cannot be conceived at this point. And the people who were pregnant during this time the curse was cast, um, they suffered or experienced a miscarriage, which is very traumatizing. But I feel like the third book in the series kind of ups the game a little bit as well because apparently the day this happened was cursed by this curse. The cause of this curse going on for so long was the grief of the unborn souls that were lost that day. And I don't know if I'm seeing too much in this but bear with me because this is not to invalidate any feelings, trauma of people who have lost a child this way, who have experienced a miscarriage. But I feel like this kind of goes against my feelings and other people's feelings about abortion because assigning a soul to each and every one of those, even embryos, clumps of cells that were lost, that implies that the embryos in first stages of pregnancy is already alive because it has a soul, which basically implies in our world that abortion is murder, which is simply not true. I feel like it adds to guilt that people who abort their pregnancies should feel. I don't, I don't really know where I'm going with this, but it just didn't really sit right with me. So yeah, this is basically me trying to find an explanation for the feeling that I had uh, when I read all of that. I might be reading too much into this, so let me know if I do. Or I misinterpreted the author, of course. That could that could be true as well. So do with that what you will. <laughs> Still, the trigger warning for uh, miscarriages and losing children obviously still stands. I did end up giving this book three stars because it really relied heavily on that particular plot point. Um, but also I felt like it dragged on a little too long. Uh, there was a lot of traveling, searching for people after having found the other person that which they left and then having to find them again. So yeah, compared to the second book, which I absolutely loved, this wasn't as enjoyable of a read for me. But um, yeah, I ended up giving this book three stars. So the next book that I read was A Conclave by Penelope Douglas. This is a novella, I believe, in the between the third and fourth book of the Devil's Night series. And this is about Rika, Michael, Kai, Winter and... Who is that too? The cousin. Uh, what's, his, what's his name? can't remember. Anyways, uh, this is about those people um, locking themselves away on this ship and trying to make some decisions, talking stuff through, talking things out. Um, actually, not a lot happened in this novella. I was expecting a little bit more, even though I knew it was a novella and you should be able to read the entire series without reading this one um, in between. So I knew there were, wasn't going to be much uh, weird plot things going on in the general storyline. Uh, but yeah, it was smutty, it was hot. Um, I kind of expected more from the entire discussion thing going on because that was the entire point of that conclave they were holding. I felt like they were planning on discussing multiple things, in, but they discussed like two or three topics and then everything was over again. So 
I don't know. So yeah, I ended up giving this book three stars because I enjoyed it, but I wanted a bit more from it too, so. So the next book that I read was We Hunt a Flame by Hafsa Faisal. Um, oh god, it's getting darker and darker in here. In this book, uh, we follow Zafira, and Zafira is the hunter, and she goes into this magical, um, very scary, dark forest in order to hunt for meat for her people. Um, but this mysterious and dark wood is creeping slowly um, more and more towards the town where she lives in. But then in this book, she finds out that uh, this particular artifact um, is able to stop the arts from creeping towards her town and she has to find it. But yeah, she goes on this journey to find this artifact. And the other side, we have Nasir. Uh, Nasir is the Prince of Death. He's this professional ninja assassin and he works for his dad, the Sultan. Um, and his assignment is also to find this artifact and bring it to his father because his father needs it. So yeah, and then these two characters meet um, with a couple of others as well um, and they go on this journey partly together um, without actually able to trust each other but yeah they still need each other's help. I feel like the world in this story was very interesting and I wanted more especially with all of the different creatures that were featured in this story. Like this book really focused on characters and there was a lot of stuff happening but um, that only started until later on in the book. It kind of made me struggle a bit to get into. Um, I really enjoyed the writing. I love the characters. I really want to find out what is going to happen next. I still actually want to know more of the side characters that we meet in this book as well. Um, but yeah, I am planning on continuing on with this duology, I believe it's going to be. Um, and yeah, I gave this one uh, three and a half stars. So the next book that I read was My Lovely Wife. This is a mystery thriller. In this book, we follow our narrator who I don't believe has a name, I realize right now, which makes this book even more creepy. But we follow a man and we follow him and his wife, Millicent. And in some way, they have started talking about wanting to murder women for funsies. So that is basically how we start this book, like our narrator being on the hunt for their next victim. It was not that I had lower expectations of this book, but I was still really pleasantly surprised by this book. I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving this book four and a half stars. I really feel like this is one of my favorite thrillers that I've read so far. Um, even though we didn't really have as much on-page action of like you would have expected with a synopsis like this, uh, which is why I gave it four and a half stars instead of five. But I uh, was really pleasantly surprised. I really enjoyed reading this one and it really kept you on your toes. It was still a book that I couldn't put down. It's really interesting and such a crazy concept. And I really think that Samantha Downing has done a fabulous job at writing this. So yeah, I highly recommend this book if you are um, in the mood for a good thriller. So the next book that I read was Now I Rise by Kirsten White. So this is the second book in the Conqueror saga and this is like a gender-bent historical fiction novel and we follow Lada which is like a gender-bent version of uh, Vlad the Impaler. Um, it is not historically accurate at all or like ne not nearly as historical ac historically accurate as it's history is supposed to be. What am I saying? Anyways, so we follow Lada and Radu. Radu is her brother and um, we follow them throughout the rest of like their lives. That's what the entire series is. But at the end of the first book, we kind of, the characters, main characters that we follow kind of diverge um, and do different things uh, from each other. So yeah, Lada, Radu and Mahmed are like going into their own respective directions further in this book. I wasn't really uh, expecting to pick this book up this month, um, but I am a very lousy planner and I didn't really plan enough audiobooks into my TBR this month. Uh, there were a lot of physical books that I still needed to read and wanted to read, but I didn't get to. Um, but yeah, I did have time left for an audiobook for the times that I am able to read or listen to an audiobook. So I picked up this one um, because, yeah, it's still on my list um, of series that I started and need to finish. And um, because 
yeah, I kind of knew Lada already as a character and I knew she was going to be a bad bitch. So perfect for the bad bitch readathon. But like I said, it's a gender bent story. It's not historically accurate at all. But even though it's not historically accurate, um, I wouldn't even know. Um, but it was so well done. It was so fucking well done. So yeah, there's a lot of strategy involved in this book. So if that's not your cup of tea, you're not going to absolutely love this. But it's still so well done because I am not a strategy person either, but I really, really enjoyed this. I love Lada. I love Radu as characters. So yeah, I love Nazira as a character as well. She's fierce. Um, yeah, I loved where the story is going. I love, I just love Lada. I just love Lada, man. So yeah, that's what I think of that one. And I just hope to pick up the third book in the series soon because it has been way too long before I picked up the, the second one in the first place. So note to self. And I ended up giving this book four stars, by the way important. So yeah, September was also the month that I started my journey into the phenomenon that is The Diviners by Libra Bray. Um, this is the first book in the series and I cannot wait to get my hands on the rest of it. But yeah, this series takes place in 1920s New York and we follow Evie and she's a fierce character and she's so fucking funny. And also she has special powers, like a bunch of other people in this book as well. And we follow crimes. First of all, this book was so much more creepy than I had anticipated. It had the perfect amount of spooky. It had the perfect amount of wit in here. And I fell in love with Evie as a character. Um, I'm just really excited to see what's going to happen next. I wish this book kind of went a little bit more in depth with some of the characters because I really want to, I'm a nosy bitch, I want to know more about these people. Um, but also, I also recognize that that could be a thing that's going to happen in like the three other books that are still in the series. So um, yeah, I'm still, I still gave this book four and a half stars. This was like one of the other surprises this month for me. So very excited to get to the rest of the series. So then I read the three books for the Buzzwaterthon. Um, the first one being A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. So this is a historical romance and this is the first book in the Spindle Cove series where we follow Bram and Susanna. And Susanna is kind of the head of Spindle Cove, which is this little quiet seaside town um, with a lot of women present because a lot of sickly women, a lot of ladies retire for the summer to that town to find some rest and relaxation um, and just basically minding their own business. Then there's Bram and Bram has been injured in the war but he's made a lord from like the castle in the neighborhood of Spindle Cove so she, he has to build a militia, create a militia of the men who are present right there and um, to in order to defend the, the this part of the coast, his part of the coast from um, outside threats. So yeah, he's still trying to do his part for the country. And um, yeah, Susanna is not having that. So they go head to head a lot. They do not like each other, but then they fall in love, etc., etc. I was kind of disappointed by this one. I really liked The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. And I gave that one four stars, I believe. That is like my, my highest rated historical romance ever. I really, really enjoyed that one. Um, however, I was kind of disappointed with this one. I wasn't really feeling the romance. Mostly I feel like that was because this was lust at first sight. So that basically threw me off from the romance entirely, basically. I know Tessa Dare can make me feel all of the things with her things with the romances that she writes. So I am going definitely going to be uh, continuing on with this series. But um, yeah, I'm kind of low-key, high-key um, disappointed with this one. So I did end up giving this book two stars, unfortunately. So the next book that I read was The Night Tiger by Yang Se Chu. This is a historical fiction novel set in 1930s Malaysia. And we follow Ji Lin, who's a dressmaker, and she um, is trying to earn some money on the side as a dance hall girl because she wants to help her mother get rid of her debt. And we follow Ren, who's a houseboy to this doctor, but this doctor um, passes away and the last mission he gave his 
houseboy was to find his amputated finger and to return it to his body, to his grave, as he passes within 49 days of his passing um, in order to stop things from happening. So yeah, one day Jilin is working at the dance hall and she encounters a man who is dancing with her and he leaves her this tube jar thing with a severed finger in it. Weird things start happening and she feels like it's her mission together with her stepbrother to um, find the rightful owner of that finger. So this is definitely a weird concept, but it created some tension, which was just so good. So yeah, this story is heavily based on Chinese folklore. Uh, there are mysterious deaths and there's this weird tiger on the loose. It was just really unique. And even though the writing wasn't really my style, it was something that I had to get used to in the beginning because of the alternating chapters and the different perspectives. And despite the fact that I thought that the romance in this book could have been done better or maybe even left out completely, um, I still enjoy myself thoroughly reading this one. So yeah, I ended up giving this book four stars. And the last book that I read in September was Night Film by Marisha Pessel. This is a mystery novel and we follow Scott. He's a journalist. Scott's career isn't what it used to be. He kind of blames the downfall of his career on um, Stanislas Cordova, which is a filmmaker that he has written a story about uh, earlier on in his career. Um, but now his daughter, Ashley Cordova is found dead, um, which is uh, ruled a suicide, but he um, finds everything suspicious or he finds th that this is his chance to dive back into that case of the weird stuff surrounding that director. So yeah, I don't really want to say too much about that. So yeah, kind of a surprise. I really did not like this book. I ended up giving this book two stars because of the kind of the mystery aspect and the fact that this was like a mixed media type of book with uh, websites, articles and photos in there. Um, but everything else was just really not my thing. So yeah, I really did not like the main character in this book and normally I wouldn't really hate a book because I hated the main character or if I disliked the main character because in some books the main character is supposed to be unlikable but I feel like this main character Scott is not supposed to be unlikable. He definitely did not win best dad of the year award. He made some transphobic comments at one point. He's stereotyping the hell out of other people, black people, Asian people, um, women, I think as well. Um, and then there's the plot of this team of like makeshift detectives. Uh, the gang is trying to find out all about this death, this murder, they think, and they kind of look into it and they go from one lead to the next. Every lead leads to the next person that they need to speak to. Um, not even talking about the, the way these people spoke. They spoke as if they were writers themselves. They were telling stories from the beginning to the end with each and every detail and the entire atmosphere within that as well. That really did not feel natural to me and everything was just so convenient. I really wanted to love this book so much. Um, but yeah, it was definitely not a book for me. And unfortunately, on that sour note, those were all of the books that I read in the month of September. So yeah, let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and if you did, what your opinion was of them and if they differ from mine. Or drop some recommendations in the comments of the amazing books that you have read in September. And during the month of October, I'll hopefully be reading all of the books that I mentioned in my October TBR, which I'll link up here. I'll be participating in a readathon called Gothtober this month, so I think that will be loads of fun. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.